What's up my stat stars? Welcome to ADP Statistics Unit 1 Summary Video. In this video, we're going to go all the way through Unit 1, exploring one variable data, talking about all the major themes and all the major concepts to make sure that you are ready either for your Unit 1 test or to help prepare you for the AP test in May. Now, before we begin, I want to mention two really, really important things. First, this is just a review video. We're not going to cover every single teeny tiny topic in extreme detail. That's what a class was for. The purpose of this video is to take everything that your teacher threw into the last couple of weeks and put it into one digestible video that kind of covers the big major themes of it all. Now, if you are looking for much more specific videos that cover every single topic in Unit 1 and all the other units of AP Statistics, please check out my YouTube channel. I got videos for every single topic explaining everything in much more detail than this review video. Or if you're really looking for a lot of great information that can help you prepare for your unit test or the AP test, please check out the Ultimate Review Packet using the link in the description. At the Ultimate Review Packet, you can get a free trial to take a look at every single unit. You get study guides, practice sheets, practice multiple choice, and you also get these awesome review videos as well. And the best part is you even get answer keys to those study guides and those practice sheets to make sure that you're doing everything okay. And at the very, very end, you can even do a full length practice AP exam. And the second thing I want to mention is, yes, you heard me right, study guide. While you're at the ultimate review packet, please make sure to download my study guide for unit one. I also got study guides for all the other units. And you can use that study guide while you're watching this video. You could pause, fill parts in, hit play, pause, fill some more parts in or you can watch the whole video and fill it all out at the end. But the best thing is you got access to that answer key, so you can check out all the answers at the end and make sure that you're doing everything okay. And if you even want more practice to prepare you for the exam, you can also check out my practice sheets. All right, let's get into Unit 1. Unit 1 is all about exploring one variable data. We're really going to learn how to analyze one variable or how to take one variable and compare it across multiple samples or multiple groups. Now listen, understanding how to analyze data is super important. It may seem kind of boring and not that fun at the beginning, but what we need to do with analyzing data later on in statistics is so crucial to the really the big important concepts that are probably going to be the most challenging for you. So if you understand how to analyze that and now, it's going to pay off big time at the end when we do some really important stuff. Now listen, this unit is really broken down into two things, categorical data and quantitative data. And I'm not going to lie to you, categorical data is way easier, way faster, way shorter. In fact, only a small percentage of this entire unit is even about categorical data. Much, much bigger part of the unit is over quantitative data. But regardless of categorical or quantitative variables, there's something really important that you need to understand. Anytime you select a sample, and from that sample you collect data, any summary information that you learn from that sample data is called a statistic. Whereas if you collect information, if you collect data from an entire population, then Anything you learn from that population is called a parameter. It's really easy to rememberize these things because it basically here's the idea. Statistics starts with an S and so does samples and statistics come from samples. Parameter starts with a P and parameters come from populations which also serve through the P so it's pretty easy to remember that concept. Now we collect data from individuals and individuals can be, well, honestly anything. It can be a person, it can be a chair, it can be a tree, it can be a lake, it can be a state, it can be a country, it can be a day for that, all that matters. Really an individual can be anything. Now here's the most important part. A variable is any characteristic that can change from one individual to another. So if you just think about a person or maybe multiple people, think about any characteristic that can change from one to another eye color, hair color, weight, height, just to name a few. Now, the reason why we like analyzing data so much is because individuals vary. If individuals didn't vary, well, then honestly, we wouldn't even need this course and the world would be a pretty boring place. Now, here's the deal with variables. There's only two types. All variables in the world can be categorized into two types, either categorical variables or quantitative variables. A categorical variable takes on values that are category names or group labels, like eye color or hair color. Whereas a quantitative variable takes on numerical values that are either measured or counted, like the weight of a frog or how many candies are in a bag. To try to keep it really simple, a categorical variable value is typically going to be a word, whereas a quantitative variable value is typically going to be a number. Now, there are a couple exceptions to that rule, namely zip code. Zip code is a number, but it's not measured and it's not counted. That doesn't make it quantitative. 
A zip code is simply a number that tells your mail where to go, which means it simply puts your mail into a specific category for your city's post office. So that's why zip code is one of those weird exceptions that's a number, but it's technically a categorical variable. But to be honest, in most cases, it's pretty straightforward. Categorical variables are words, quantitative variables are numbers. Let's start off with categorical data because it really is shorter and much faster to talk about. There's just not a whole lot there. Now, let's say that we take a sample of 89 lemurs and one of the variables that we want to analyze from those lemurs is the type of lemur it is, whether it's a sisica, an ii, a ringtail, or a mouse, and I'm probably pronouncing some of those wrong. But again, those are all words, which makes this a categorical variable. Now, if we just have all that data collected, it's probably gonna be a really long, boring list of all those different categories. So the first thing we'd like to do is organize that into what we call a frequency table. Frequency is just a fancy word for counts. Here we list each of the categories and we simply count how many of the lemurs fit into each of those categories. Now we could also take a look at what's called the relative frequency. The relative frequency is just the proportion of lemurs that fell into each category. So for example, we take the number of ringtail lemurs that we have, we divide by 89 and we get the proportion. Now keep in mind that a relative frequency, a percentage, or a rate all tell us the exact same information that a proportion does. They're all really basically the same thing. However, we really do like using proportions. I'm not trying to say that we're never going to use frequencies at all, but we like relative frequencies a lot because when you are comparing two samples, especially two samples that have different sizes, using relative frequencies is a much more fair way to compare them. When it comes to making graphs of categorical data, we really have two options, pie charts, or what some people call circle graphs, and bar graphs. Now, a bar graph could also be turned into what's called a relative bar graph. So instead of the heights of each bar showing the frequency or the number of lemurs that fall into each category, it simply shows the proportion. Whereas a circle graph only shows proportions because the idea is each slice is a proportion of the whole circle. Now, when we look at a pie chart or a bar graph, one thing that you might be asked to do is to describe the distribution of that variable. Now, what is a distribution? Because that's a really important word for this entire unit. A distribution of data is basically what values that that data takes on and how often it takes on those values. So if we're asked to talk about the distribution of categorical data, really all we could say is maybe which category had the most, which category had the least, and maybe we could even mention all the different categories that are even available to us, but there's not a whole lot we could say. Oftentimes, the best things we can do with either a bar graph or a pie chart is compare two different samples. So for example, here we see a pie chart for the lemurs in Forest 1, a pie chart for the lemurs in Forest 2, and because pie charts are based on proportions, it's really easy to see some important differences. Like we notice in Forest 2, there's a much higher proportion of ciscas than there is in Forest 1, and we simply know that by just seeing that the piece of that pie is much bigger in Forest 2 than Forest 1. Now, what it's going to be expected of you to answer questions about on the AP exam when it comes to categorical variables is really, again, like I said, just describe the distribution, reading a bar graph, also noticing if it's a relative bar graph so you can see what proportion or what percentage of data falls into each category. 